I'm talking about that, like that sort of thing too. You know, the issue of hope versus despair, because it comes up so much when you're dealing with ecological issues. I mean, you know, we're we're in a bad situation and things are getting worse. We're responding in some ways, but uh, I th- uh, clearly not not adequately, not not doing enough, fast enough. And so, you know, I think a lot of us are caught up in this duality of, of hope and despair. And of course, it's a duality in the sense that each feeds off the other. And so to be to be free of hope is also to be free of despair, not not to be motivated by that. I think that if it's really important that our ecological engagement and our social engagement generally, right, be motivated, you know, not by fear, by love, right? I mean, remember that Nizargadatta quote, uh, when I realize that, that I'm everything, that's love. So then out of that love comes this natural concern for engagement, right? The other interesting thing about love is I, rather than despair, I think it's really important for us to become in touch with, to get in touch with our grief. Because if we're paying attention to what's going on now, there, there's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of personal and just massive scale grief in, in many ways, but certainly in terms of what we're doing to the biosphere. And what I think has happened is many of us have have repressed this grief because we're 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 terrified to feel it. First of all, we confuse it with despair, which is very different. Despair, hope, and despair are like head trips about what's going to happen, what can happen in the future. But grief is something we can feel right right here and now. And as somebody put it, um, you know, grief is the homage we we pay to what we love. I remember once I was in downtown London, and there's a little memorial to the victims of 9-11, which we've just had, of course, two days ago. Uh, and the only thing on the memorial is grief is the price we pay for love. Um, if, 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 if we, again, if we repress our grief, in a way, we're going to repress our love as well. And it's important, I think, to get in touch with our grief and to, to be able to feel it, because there's also something wonderful about it uh, in the sense that it can really cut through so much of the bullshit of our lives. You know, it can really ask us what the hell's really important. You know, am I going to get caught up in these little ego things or, you know, what's really important? And the grief, there's nothing better than than grief for, and, you know, because the grief is, is the other side of our love. And, you know, more and more, I think that that's exactly what what we've got to get in touch with. And then out of the love, I think meaning, meaning arises spontaneously according to the situation we're in, according to the kind of person we are. Maybe I can just add here that uh, be, because I wrote a book on ecodharma, <clears throat> Buddhist um, what Buddhist teachings for the ecological crisis. You know, people ask me. They'll contact me and they'll ask me, you know, like, what should I do? I want to be an eco-sattva. What should I do? Even though the book says pretty clearly, Buddhism doesn't tell us what to do, right? Because the situation of the Buddha 2,400 years ago, Iron Age India, (laughs) very different. You know, we're not going to find answers, specific answers in Asian Buddhist texts. Nonetheless, there's something fundamental here that I think can, can help us. And I think we need to engage in a kind of triple reflection, contemplation, meditation, whatever you might want to call it, and ask ourselves in the face of everything that's happening, what do I have to offer? Taking into account my full situation, my age, my health, do I need money? Who depends on me? Uh, How much time do do I have? What do I have to offer? Number two, what are the good possibilities for me? given what I have to offer, because there's always too many things to do. There are, all, there are always so many issues interconnected for sure, but we can't try to address all of them individually. And then thirdly, having digested those first two, and this is where we come back to meaning, 
right? Having digested this question, what do I have to offer? What are the good possibilities for me? Then to really go deep within. And this is not an ego question. This is not an, e there's not, there's no rational answer here. But then this deep meditation on the issue, on the question, what calls to me? What speaks, you know, what's tugging at my heart? Where does my love, where does my attention, where does my energy, how does it want to manifest itself? And it's just so important that it gets beyond ego and that we feel there's something deeper, you know, non-dual that's uh, impelling us here. Yeah, that's a, a beautiful way to frame this kind of effective, uh, engaged and compassionate action in the world. And and I really love that you brought in grief uh, because right before this, I the the thinker that I brought in, Stephen Jenkinson, who talks about hope and fear, um, he he's huge about this. He's a former palliative care worker, and um, he actually has a fascinating book, Die Wise. And he has a band. He started a band called Knights of Grief and Mystery. And I, I recently had a chance to go to his show and uh, he came. In, I'm actually from New York. So he was over here. Uh, and um, yeah, and it's just it just this this element of grief is just so important to connect with that as difficult as it is to be with that and to stay with that. But it's certainly something that's repressed. And it's almost like we're not gaining the insights or we're not we're not gaining the appreciation for life or for love on the same level as when we're actually in touch with our grief. So uh, I love that you brought that in. And I just see um, parallels between you and Stephen Jenkinson, like both having this um, like elders and, and this view of, he also talks about the environment and the Anthropocene and how we're affecting the planet and um, about like, effective engaged action he speaks about that like it's you can't just sit at home and meditate or you can't just do therapy like that's not enough like that's not going to save the world so i see a lot of these parallels and um I, I feel happy that i'm able to engage with such elders uh through this podcast 